got a he a thing going on in my hair. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> so I saw this video the other day. And by the other day, I mean yesterday. And it was of the Steve-O's podcast. If you don't know who Steve-O is, he's just like this aging uh, prankster that essentially made a career pranking himself. But Steve-O has a podcast now. And if you ever watch Steve-O's podcast, it's a little difficult to get through because apparently he doesn't know how to speak right. So every time he talks, he kind of sounds like he's forcing his voice out. And he may have spent his whole life like eating a pack of cigarettes a day. But anyway, Stevo's got this uh, product on Amazon, Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole. I haven't tried it, but if you try it, please let me know if it tastes any good because I don't know, it just seems like that guy needs money. At least he's hawking something that I feel like he produced and bottles himself, hopefully not from his own butthole. But he had Blink-182's Tom DeLonge on there. And it's, I know it's pronounced Tom DeLonge, but if you've ever seen this interview back in the day, it turns out he's French or something, and so he's been pronouncing his own name wrong for years and found out he was Tom DeLonge. But anyway, if you know anything about Tom, he's been a major advocate for aliens, alien technology, UFOs, not so much like we need equal rights for aliens or anything like, more like he's one of those people that like truly believes they exist. And he start, and if you ever get him talking about it as they do in Steve's podcast, he does a fantastic job of breaking down the uh, theoretical uh, engines in the spaceships and how they potentially move and, and uh, you know, where he thinks the technology is and where these aliens come from and all that. And something that I noticed in the video is as he was talking more and more about the aliens that he believes are in a not time displaced reality, but more like, I think he said something like the further in the future you, you get, the more advanced the technology is. And the aliens that we get in our atmosphere and stuff is like, uh, really like trans dimensional beings traversing time, even though they're, they're like they're aliens, but they're from here or something in the future. It was very, if I'm being honest, it was very David Icke-ish. And so they were talking about feeding off fear and the archons and a, a lot of David Icke stuff. And if you've ever seen David Icke, he is an interesting character. There's like two major clips of him back in 1992 on Wogan where he gets made fun of for saying that he's the son of Jesus or son of God and he's claiming to be Jesus when that's not actually what he said. He was claiming to be son of the Godhead and that we are all the Godhead and the idea was like sort of like this unifying energy that we are all a part of like the source, you know. But anyway, and his uh, other big, big issue was actually a few years ago when COVID first happened in the pandemic. Somehow he stirred some shit by... Um, I guess he was somehow claiming like 5G did something to COVID. I didn't watch the video. I do know that it got London Real uh, into a lot of shit. And from that point, London Real went to a downfall because people started looking into him the more he was trying to be the voice of freedom of speech, even though he's like in London, like a New York stock stock broker that lives in London. Like, yeah, I don't know. But anyway... So Tom and Steve are talking very uh, a lot about these aliens and things, and I couldn't help but notice that the further um, the conversation went on, Tom started expressing his beliefs in not so much futurism, but I guess he started expressing faith in that these technologies do exist and they have been here and all that. And so he's super focused on the future, the technology of the future, possibilities of the future, and what I saw from that was it sort of made him a, not anti-religious or anti-Jesus, but it was he was almost ridiculing the ideas of Christianity because they didn't coincide with his current beliefs of technology. And it made me kind of curious where, where people's faith in general are nowadays, because for him, obviously, his faith is in the future. And while that future gives him the possibility of things visiting the past and all, and you know now and changing things for the better and all that, he seems to almost not ridicule, but like when when he brings up Jesus, he says he brings up Jesus in a way by by talking about if we could just access the future technology, then we would understand that we are all part of the same source, and that source isn't Jesus, and it's. It just seemed like a weird jab at religion when even like, cause I'm not religious. I'm not religious, never will be, but I am, I, I do believe in God. And 
the one thing I notice is if you start looking and putting your faith in future in, in the technologies of possibilities and all that, you sort of begin to ignore the basic questions of what about the past? What about the beginning? If you're such a futurist to where you think that even at the end of time, they could just come back to our time, then there really is no end of time, right? Then what about the beginning of time? In the beginning, Big Bang Theory, uh, out of nothing, an explosion happened. Or if you're religious, out of nothing, God was like, it's all there. To me, it's like the same thing. Um, in the beginning, nothing, then there was something. No one really talks about the end of existence. People talk about the end of the world and all that all the time. But this podcast made me kind of realize that that the more you put your faith into future ideas, the less likely you are to even consider ideas of the past. And I think that's a bit of a concern only because even if you were to look at Christianity from a historical context, okay, that saying goes, if you, if you don't learn from your past you're, or if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. And I kind of get concerned when people are so uh, futurist that they just ridicule the past. Because without both, it's, it's hard for me to think that your conclusion is something truly grounded in reality. You know? But I don't know. Um, I like a few Blink-182 songs. I'm glad he's back with the band or whatever. They're really old now, but his space ideas are fantastic. If you ever get the chance, check out his podcast or check out the podcast he's on with Steve O. He he breaks down in a very, as Steve O put it, digestible way to understand, you know, the um, spaceships and how, how the engines potentially work and travel and all that stuff. So it's it's entertaining. And um, yeah, man, if you get the chance, try out Steve O's hot sauce for your butthole. I'm very curious if that's any good. <laughs>